Good morning, Wilmington. Good morning, Wilmington. Good morning, Newcastle County. Good morning, Kent and Sussex County. Thank you so much uh, for coming together today. Let's give a big round of applause to Common Claws, Sierra Club, the Southern Delaware Democratic Alliance, Infrae, Power and Light, all the groups that came to Indivisible Highlands, all the groups that came together today. I know she left. She promised me she'd be watching online. Let's give it up for our representative, Lisa Blunt Rochester. That is, uh, that is my, my job isn't exactly a walk in the park, but that's a tough job she has for us in Washington, uh, standing up for us every day. I also want to make sure to highlight, I saw Representative Eric Morrison here today. Give Representative Morrison a round of applause. Thank you. Representative Paul Baumbach is here somewhere, I believe. Representative Baumbach, thank you so much uh, for being here today. Every time I come to Rodney Square, every time, oh, sorry, Representative Frank Cook, Cookie, formerly of Newcastle County Government. He's one of ours. Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Every time I come to Newcastle County, every time I think of my experience here one day, in December, November, back in the 1980s, I was a little kid, and there was a man named Reverend Jesse Jackson speaking right there, right there in Rodney Square. It was a very cold day, like 180 degree opposite of today. And he asked when he started, there were barriers around, he, I believe he was running for president at the time. There were barriers around, and he asked the police to take down the barriers so we could all come closer. It's a little hot out today. I'm still worried about COVID. There are still some COVID cases out there, so we're not going to do that. But he led something that I know many of you remember called the Rainbow Coalition. I thought it was a fantastic name. The Rainbow Coalition. As I look around here, I see our state. I see the state of Delaware, and I see our country in a Rainbow Coalition yeah. to say, we are different than this. We are different than what we see on the news and we need to pass the For the People Act so that every voice here has a voice in our democracy. Everyone who can go to the polls, gets a ride, can get to the polls, whether here in Wilmington, Delaware, whether in Texas or, or Georgia or anywhere across this country. My second memory of Jesse Jackson in a park is in Grant Park, Chicago, in 2008. In Grant Park, Chicago, in November 2008, Jesse Jackson, who was known for his power and his strength and his uncompromising uh, um, actions for justice, he was crying on a night in November of 2008 because they just had announced that Senator Barack Obama would become the next president of the United States. Years later, Reverend Jackson said he never imagined that so much would happen so fast. He never imagined that so much would happen so fast. I always thought that was very interesting. After hundreds of years of struggle, after hundreds of years of slavery, decades of a civil rights movement, Reverend Jackson looked back and said so much had happened so fast. You may wonder why I'm talking about this. We're here to talk about the right to vote. I think at some level, what we're talking about is the most fundamental justices in our country, in our community. It's about saying that everyone, no matter what your history in this land, you deserve an equal say in the annals of power of our country, of our state, our county, and our city. Your great-grandfather may have been a slave. Your great-grandfather may have been a master. We all deserve an equal shot here in this democracy. You know, Neha, you talked a little bit about not yet being able to vote. Does anyone know anything about preaching to chickens? Does anyone know anything about preaching to chickens? My first campaign manager in 2016 was a guy named Rashad Taylor from the great state of Georgia, or from Atlanta, Georgia. And when I was doing job interviews, one thing stuck out his, on his resume, that he'd been an intern. He'd been an intern for Representative John Lewis for six or seven years. And he would often tell me, he would also often tell me, Matt, the way you learn this job is you preach to chickens. You preach to chickens, and when Representative Lewis was five or six years old, he lived on a chicken farm. And when his mom was inside cooking dinner, and he didn't have much to do, 
he would say he would go outside, he'd gather the chickens, and he'd preach to the chickens. He'd preach to them about the Lord. He preached to them about justice, and he preached to them about the change that was going to come. And he would say when the wind blew, the chickens would sway, and he knew he made a point. <laughs> and the funny thing is, he came to Delaware uh, just a few years before he passed, thanks to Senator Coons, Senator Carper, and Representative Blunt Rochester. And he talked about how that experience, preaching to chickens, developed his vision for what this country could be. He would tell the chickens, it doesn't matter your birthright. It doesn't matter what color chicken you are. It doesn't matter what your fate is going forward. It doesn't matter what kind of eggs you lay. But we are all in this together. So Neha, I'll tell that story particularly to you because you don't have to be 18 to preach to chickens. <laughs> you can be a child to stand up and say, this is not what we want our country to be. It takes voice. It takes energy and it takes action. So I'm here simply to say thank you to every single one of you to come for coming out today. We need you. We need you to preach to chickens here in Delaware. We need you to preach to chickens in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, in Texas, and across this country if we are ever going to achieve the kind of America that we all know is a possibility but it has never yet been 